Right to point, exactly right to point to the culture of fear. And I think we can look everywhere, you know, the kind of demonizing of uh, undocumented people. I mean, who are yeah. we all? I mean, my parents came here, right, from Russia and Sweden. My parents' parents came here. I never knew them. But the notion that, uh, you know, now we're stopped and we're fixed unit doesn't apply anywhere in the world. People are on the move across borders everywhere in the world. That's one of the characteristics of the moment we live in. People are desperate, really, yeah, to find a better life. And they are on the move for reasons of dreams and reasons of necessity. And all the walls and the barriers in the world can't stop that. So it's our job, I think, to embrace that. But the fear is, is specific and particular. It's definitely a fear and agi I mean, this election cycle, what a racist piece of garbage we're seeing, you know, it's, it's unbelievable, so it's so Sexist, explicitly uh, it's racist that you appeal to white fear and anger, it's that the U exactly what I was saying before, that we are, the U.S. is a shrinking force in the world, still very lethal and dangerous, yeah. and still very wealthy, of course. We don't feel like we're wealthy anymore. We're told we have money for nothing. Not for schools, not for health care, not for a clean environment, not for the arts. But for the military, we, we got but it. But for the military <laughs> and so, for permanent war, we have nothing but money. Along those lines, I feel that the initial um, reaction by Rahm Emanuel to the G8 and NATO um, demonstrations was uh, so wrong-headed and so placing in people's minds the notion that they have something to fear from, exactly. from people demonstrating. And I, I, I resent that greatly because, um, well, I also want to say to people, don't believe that. Um, no, and I do think you have a right to be Katie, on the I street. Think I can't tell you. I was speaking yesterday to a group of a couple hundred teachers from around the city. Uh, teachers of history and social studies and they're saying that their students are being told you know that Chicago is a site of danger and they have to stay yeah. out of downtown in May for all of May and it's going to be you know crazy people and uh, violent people coming into the city from everywhere I think that prop well first of all why the hell are they having NATO G8 come to Chicago? Well, that's the question They're, I want to get to. I mean, to. this is the combining <laughs> of the world's, the, the first ever global <laughs> international military force. A third of the world's countries are yeah. allied with NATO. What the hell is NATO? It has nothing to do with the North Atlantic. Or a treaty. Yeah, it's changed. <laughs> or an organization. It's a super military force run by the United States, I guess, in Germany. And uh, secondly, the G8, you know, the eight richest countries in the world. So they're, why would they be coming here for the 18th, 19th, 20th, 21st of May? You have to kind of wonder, did they, did anybody, was think? anybody alive in 1968? Well, we, Do we have any historical memory? Are we doomed? You had that article in the Reader last week. Yeah, uh, by Ben Jaroski's. And, and, uh, and Mick Dumkey, who had been McDunkey's. on the show a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And one of the things that they say in there officially, it's like, well, Obama gave his blessing to it, but then they say it unofficially, no one was wanting this. Obama didn't call for it. It's just Rom. There wasn't a committee of people. And this is what I got from that article. That's what they seem to be saying. But yeah. whatever happened... Why would he want to do that? There ha I think that they have tons of federal dollars for security. The police, our neighborhood police, tell us that they've been training now for six months. And on the side, they tell me they're going down to demonstrate. agitators. And, uh, you know, that they told us, you know, don't grab an agitator by the arm when you're arresting them because they're going to have razor blades and spikes under their shirt. I mean, it's a lunatic, it's a culture of fear exactly as you raised, Katie, yeah. and it's ridiculous. I mean, People I People should come from all over the world to Chicago in May, peacefully and culturally and agitationally and civil disobediencely and lawfully. And we and hope to refresh them and feed them. Exactly. I think they should come right here to the Heartland, millions of people. I think we should <laughs> camp on the lakefront in the public spaces. The public, we have to, you know, the th inspiration of 2011 was to seize the public spaces, yeah. to occupy the public spaces. Right. And I just, I think that spirit is going to be coming back to Chicago. And hopefully we're not going to meet a massive military force because the spirit who's coming here is looking for justice and peace.
There, you know, right before the G8 uh, uh, NATO combined thing, there Chicago is also hosting a, a slew of uh, Nobel Peace Prize exactly. awardees. In yes. that spirit, I'd like to give a thought out there for um, a Mandela, who is in the hospital, this great warrior um, of 92 years old. Peace and blessings to him in his time and transition. And uh, but anyway. We're going to have peace and warriors. And the spirit of Jane Addams. I mean, and the spirit they're of Jane Addams coming to right. Chicago where the first woman, you know, Peace, peace. Prize winner inspires is one of the icons of city history. And yeah. I, I, you know, along with Ida B. Wells Barnett, I mean, we have this incredible history incredible. in Chicago. We have two histories. Yes. And I think the people's history here is the one that is uh, the Nobel Prize winners coming, hopefully, will be in the ascendance. Do you know about this? The uh, community leader faith groups calling on the mayor yesterday to match money um, to be used um, for G8 protection, et cetera, et cetera. They're calling on uh, matching funds to be used for, uh, to keep libraries and clinics open, invest in jobs, schools, housing, struggling neighborhoods, essential services. Um, I thought that was pretty. Uh, it's fabulous. Fabulous. And we should right. know, you know, where's this money coming from? They that's don't training the police. That's bringing in. Well, somebody knows. Yeah. Well, I mean, knows. you know, we. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, and the city council passing resolutions, you know, that well, everything that, that, has to. We we need the public space, and if anything other than 2011 inspired us to take the public space, it belongs to the public, and the public takes good care of it, actually. Actually, Takes we do. really good care of it. Look at Occupy last year. I mean, incredible care. You know, every single Occupy site had a clinic, it had food, a library. it had cleanup squads, oh. it had things to read, it had great entertainment and speakers and music and light. I mean, this is the like population us has learning the future, right? That's right. Very important. Let's Very just important. go back briefly to the city council that uh, not only okayed Rom's budget, but then uh, okayed these laws. They thought that he, oh, we made a few changes, but only five people stood up and objected to it and voted against to it. Uh, and a number of, of, of what I would have to say the more progressive aldermen in this, the city council went along with him. And maybe that's because he talks to them, maybe because he he's lets, you know, they have a little more influence or say, they like to think. Yes. But it was a real disappointment to see uh, a number of aldermen, including people that I know pretty well, uh, vote in favor of this uh, revised ordinance that uh, that Ron put through. Yeah, I didn't look at that list, and yeah. she don't believe in that. No, no, I, I think I'm. I, as I said, I'm so glad you're doing it because it's important. We have yeah. to, th you we know, have think locally and globally, and these things really matter. Yeah. So yeah, I want. I want that. Can we shift say, gears? Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, I was going to raise shift gears too. Speaking of politics that I know nothing about, <laughs> politics with uh, a small we love P. That. We love um, that. We talk a lot about stuff we don't know much yeah, about okay. up here. The governor's uh, the state of the state message. I would just want to highlight that. Whether cynically or sincerely, he called for the closing of Tam's Maxi Maxi prison and not two other prisons. And I think this is something um, that we must jump on. It's not always Good the point. prison movement in the United States is not always as flashy as everything else. But one of the highlights of last year, I think, was the hunger strike at Pelican Bay. Yes. The Maxi Maxi, you know, unbelievable isolation uh, gulag yeah. uh, that is in Northern California. And these guys, almost entirely African-American, Latino young guys, who are you know, basically condemned to die in isolation cells thousands of miles from their family members, uh, went on a hunger strike and wrote a series of incredible communiques out into the world. And of all of them, my, one of my favorite is that they wrote an open letter last fall to Occupy New York. Mm. And, you know, it's, it's that kind of, uh, in, a, in a very loving way, you know, we're watching you, we have some ideas of how you might link issues. I hope you're watching us. Um, and uh, last week when I sp we spoke in, Bill and I spoke in New York to about 500 Occupy young people. And I was urging them to write back, you know, to this is a call and response here, publicly write yeah. back, you know, and, and be in dialogue with the people in the very most oppressed places because 
uh, you know, G Governor Quinn's thing is a tiny step, but I think one of our tasks is to abolish the prison system as we know it. Just Hallelujah. abolish it. It's an outrage. It's a disaster. We just went two days ago and visited David Gilbert, an old colleague and comrade and friend of ours in upstate New York prisons. What a tragedy to be in a prison visiting room. I mean, the level of humiliation, degradation, and suffering, for what? Has nothing to do with public safety. Let's just agree, it has nothing to do with public safety. It's about uh, racial stigmatization, demonization, removing a whole population from the economy, and really punishment and pain. And it, it, when we, as we reframe what we should be and who we can be, I think this is a crucial part of it. Tear it down. Take All it right, apart. All right, let's switch Amen. gear one more time. Uh, 2011 has also been a year where um, leadership of women has always been present. For Ooh. those of us who know it on the ground level, women are part of the leadership of every significant movement, uh, church group, uh, community organizing, um, organizing campaigns, etc. And yet, I have never seen such scary times for women across the planet. Um, we're uh, coming up on International Women's Day. Um, we've got a bunch of uh, dudes uh, in Washington talking about women's bodies. I mean, I, 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 I can't watch the news sometimes because of what's on there it's about pretty terrible. decisions that myself and my goddaughters and my nieces and et cetera are going to be uh, making um, and what decisions might be taken from them. I mean, I have two thoughts back at you, Katie, because one is we have to notice that women have changed the world since we were growing up, Amen. since I was growing up right here. So that the options for women, the, the women's movement, the girl movement, the LGBTQ, I movement has really blown open the idea of gender stereotypes and thinking about who you can be and who you are and what your relationship to the world, to elders and to the children is. So, and, and we have to notice the tremendous victories going on. I mean, yes. personally, who cares about, I, well, that's the wrong thing to say. Personally, <laughs> gay marriage, just like gays in the military, is just a small symptom of what the gay movement represents. But I think it's notable that these victories are happening across the states right now on a roll. And anybody who is involved with young people knows that it's only old people holding on to a homophobic, old-timey notion that people are different depending on who you sleep with and when. So that's a huge, I just want to note the positive side of yes, this before we get to the grim, <laughs> the grim voices. Uh, it is astonishing that we're being asked to move back uh, really into the 1950s, you know, when you about couldn't choice. go to Actually in buy contraception when women right. were, are, apparently uh, women's bodies are entirely owned by men and by church, church elders. Church going church white. Elders. Church going white men. Uh, we'll see how the right men. And, <laughs> you know, of course, the, the good news is, look what just happened with Planned Parenthood and look what's just yeah, happening with exactly. the governor of Virginia. So women yeah. are not going to have this and girls are not going to have this. Amen. And seeing this kind of, I think it's a throwback. I think it's a desperate move. I think it's even suicide on the, you know, public suicide on yeah, the part of the Republican guess. Party. Women have tended to vote for the Democrats. Uh, white women tend to vote a little more for Republicans, but in 2010, women went more for, not that there was a great voter turnout, but women voted, more than 50% voted for the Republicans. So I, I think this will turn. I think that all the current stuff going on, I, I would bet the women come out more on the side of justice for women and all people than they, they did in 2010. I Let's think hope. some guys will too. Let's hear it, right guys? Yeah, well this Hallelujah. is not Hallelujah. just, a, it is a women's issue, but it's a human issue and it's yeah. a human rights issue. And this is unbelievable that, uh, and of course it's been unbelievable all along that you know Viagra gets paid for by your health insurance and birth control doesn't. So this is, a, I think it's a, a launching oh, pad for real. You didn't? You didn't no. know that? Oh, yeah. well every woman here knows everyone, that, everyone, right? Right? Yeah. Every woman here knows that because we, we pay for birth we, control. It's we hate outrageous. That. It's crazy. So I think this is a launching pad for you know for a, really a revolutionary leap forward. Well, can we, we got a minute left? Can we Give have us. you back um, to uh, do a read on the movement in in a few months? You know, after G8 is over and we're all out of jail. Sorry. Ah, uh, <laughs> G8. 
<laughs> so let's come and let's use imagination for NATO G8. Let's Good. not be afraid of it. Right let's on. have face paint and balloons and determination to approach the people who are running the world and say, no, we're going to do it a different way. I laughing like gas. that. Amen to laughing that. Laughing gas. <laughs> oh, different kind of gas. We can laugh without the gas. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Thanks, guys. Wow. What Thanks a wonderful so much. place. Let's I have love a big round place. of applause for Bernadine, Bernadine Dorn. Dorn. Our good, good work, friend. Bernadine. Bernadine. We didn't even get to catch up on the legal center next I time. I know. Children's rights. Yeah, oh, well, children's next rights. Time. All right. All right. Uh, next Saturday, uh, March 3rd, I am so thrilled. We're going to have Cy Safransky, editor and founder of The Sun magazine, here on this stage, both at the, uh, at the radio show in the morning and in the evening, doing a reading with uh, three other contributors who, if you are a Sun reader, you know the name Poe Ballantyne, Krista Bremer, and Cheryl Strayed um, for a free reading Saturday night here at the Heartland, 7 p.m. Be here, be, you know, near. Are we taking reservations? We are taking Taking reservations. Thanks for that good because question. It, it's going to get packed. It's going to get full. Um, they've won the Pushcart Prize. They've been featured on P NPR. They they won along with the Heartland Journal, the Utney Reader, uh, Independent Press Award. We're real excited. All right. Go okay. Ahead. Uh, the next week, March 10th, we got our friend Ewan Haig, associate professor at, uh, of ge geography at DePaul, and he's going to talk a little bit about independence for Scotland and give us an update on the neo Confederates and the Republican Party. And then... Time to thank people. Okay. I want to thank everybody who makes this show possible. I want to thank uh, Laura Herman, Lisa Smith. I want to thank Daniel Kugler. I want to thank Eli Sloan downtown in the studio. I want to thank Angel Herrera here on the boards. I want to thank Paul and Mary Wozniak who do such tremendous work for us. And all of the people who... Uh, who want to get involved with us because we could use a few interns. And we encourage you to do good in the world because yeah. the world needs all the good that you do. So all power to, to the, the people, people over Amen. and out. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Hey. It's good. Mic check, mic check. Yes. Nice. It's one of my favorite.